We, uh, I understand we have Derek Pitts uh, from the Franklin Institute. Derek, great to have you with us. Thanks so much for joining us. What can you tell us, uh, get us up to speed, what we uh, have experienced here over the past hour? Right, so uh, we had this really interesting uh, geologic phenomenon happen, I, an earthquake at 4.8 magnitude over at White House Station in New Jersey. Uh, the depth of the earthquake was uh, somewhere between five and seven kilometers down, and it was felt really widely across the area. I have a friend who felt it as far north as Albany. As I looked at the USGS map, it could be felt out in uh, Buffalo as well. And this particular kind of earthquake is the result of the Earth's crust in this region just readjusting itself from geologic events from thousands to millions of years ago. I also recognize that this is the type of earthquake that's pretty typical for this region. We don't have them very often, but when we do have them, they sort of range uh, about like this, you know, smaller up to about this size. They typically aren't very uh, damaging, although we always take precautions to make sure that the infrastructure is still working right, like you've heard reports from already. Uh, but hopefully a lot of people around the region just got to feel it so they could feel what an earthquake was like. Not dangerous, but just uh, an opportunity to feel what it's like. And, and since this, and I'm, I'm throwing this out there because we're getting tweets and people are trying to figure out, and we're not used to this, right? The last one was in 2011. And since we're talking to you, chief astronomer with the Franklin Institute, some people are wondering, oh my goodness, we have an eclipse on Monday. Could there be any correlation at all for why we're feeling something like this or why this could have happened? Clear that up for and folks. The, and connected to the opening of the demon portal on Monday? No. no there's, <laughs> no, there's no connection here. Okay. There's absolutely no connection here. So, you know, I, I, mean, I mean, if you just think about it for a second, the sun and the moon are in the sky all the time. So if there was a connection, well, wouldn't this have happened already before and it hasn't? So no connection. Thank you for clearing that up. So I've got a number of tweets no, that folks uh, no already... No portal opening up here. And to understand <laughs> no, that, the no. video you were watching just a moment ago, and to clarify, Brian, that was the moment that the earthquake actually hit. You shot, saw it there uh, on Love Park camera. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the frequency, if you can, uh, Derek, on these earthquakes? These kinds of earthquakes... Uh, okay, so first of all, there's always some, like, low-level background stuff going on. And typically, you know, we don't feel the... The, the ones and the twos that happen on a fairly frequent basis. We don't feel that. When I say frequent, I mean, you know, like once or twice a year. The fours, like this one, those are really widely felt. So we pay a lot more attention to those. Remember, the other smaller ones are hidden in the background noise of everything that goes on in a large urban area. The construction, the trucks, all of that sort of stuff. So we don't feel those and don't pay attention to them. Earthquakes like these happen once every few years, every five or six, maybe every 10 years or so. And because it's a 4.8, it really stands out because it stands out separately from all the other background noise. As I said, construction and trucks, those vibrations are much lower in frequency. Yeah. And so we don't, we don't really pay attention. Derek, do you think when we have an activity like this, that this is the plates like mushing together for an unscientific term or sliding? I always thought of it, I learned back in grade school, that they were sort of sliding against each other and that's sort of that vibration as they give a little. Yeah, so that's, we're, in that case, we're talking about uh, the activity that happens between large tectonic plates. Think of this instead as, the, as a wrinkly crust in which, you know, there's, well, there's a couple of ways in which this, would ha this is happening. Let's say you have something that's cooling, and as something is cooling, the surface wrinkles a little bit. That's one mechanism for something like this to happen. The Earth is still cooling from its formation, right? So that's happening. And then the other thing we have to remember is that this region of the North America mm -hmm. also had a huge ice sheet on top of it mm -hmm. just 10,000 years ago. So as that ice sheet melted away, the ground underneath has been lifting back up as that weight dissipates with the melting of the glacier. Now, the glacier's long been gone. Yes, we get that. But the Earth is still kind of readjusting its crust from having that huge weight of a sheet of ice more than a mile tall sitting on it just above this region. A couple of final questions, and we'll let you go. Um, 
I, I know it's hard to predict, but um, where are we with technology in predicting perhaps uh, how these earthquakes happen, when they happen, and possible aftershocks? So where we are with prediction is we can identify places where earthquakes are, are likely to occur. We can look at fault lines and see what kind of fault lines they are and have some idea of the kinds of earthquakes that might happen. But it's really very difficult to pinpoint exactly when. We're doing very much better with uh, earthquakes along the San Andreas Fault because we can identify when stresses are building up that one could say might lead to an, an, an earthquake at some point in the future. But we cannot point to and say, we know an earthquake is going to happen at this location on the state at this time. So to Thomas's point, do you, do you expect that there'd be any aftershocks? Usually they're not as strong as this first one. They'd be like of a lesser amount that typically happens. They can be equal to or, or lesser than. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to say definitively, but for this kind of quake, it, uh, I, I wouldn't expect that there would be aftershocks. But, okay. you know, we, we never know what the Earth's crust is going to do. So if we look back historically, you might say in previous instances of quakes like this, in this region, there have not been aftershocks or the aftershocks are really, really weak and not felt. That's reassuring, yes. I think, for a lot of yes, people. Thank you. <laughs> Derek Pitts, certainly do appreciate your time, Chief Astronomer at the Franklin yeah. Institute.